Oh, is this actually running? I didn't realize I'd already hit the go live button. Well, I guess that we're running now. All right, so today we're going to be making uh, macaroni and cheese. And I'm actually going to turn off the monitoring for audio that I have on because it is extremely distracting to hear my voice with a, you know, tenth of a second delay. And that's uh, not very fun. I've got it here somewhere. Okay, I think that'll do it. Yep, okay, cool. Can't hear myself anymore, which is exactly what I want right now. Because hearing myself is extremely distracting. Cool. All right, so uh, J. Kenji Lopez has a fantastic uh, recipe for mac and cheese, which we're going to be following, uh, uh, roughly. Um, I'm going to be adding in a few things. So the thing about uh, macaroni and cheese is that you kind of want to get everything prepped in advance because once stuff actually starts happening, uh, it moves very fast. So we're going to prep a few things. Uh, I'm going to put some kielbasa in my uh, macaroni and cheese. So I'm just going to cut off a piece and then we're going to chop this up a little. I'll put this back in the refrigerator before it gets warm. Or you know, more accurately before I completely forget about it. We're just going to slice this up. Just to get that little bit of extra flavor in there. And then we're going to slice these into quarters so that we've got small bites as opposed to large chunks. because small bites are way better in macaroni and cheese than huge bites, at least in my opinion. Others may disagree, and of course they're wrong, but, you know, we won't, we won't tell them that. We can let them be wrong. We're, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up having uh, kielbasa, and we're going to end up having peas in this, and I've got frozen peas that I'm going to use because frozen peas are way easier to do than unfrozen peas. We're going to put these into a little bit of a bowl because bowls are the best thing out there, or at least one of them. And frozen peas, which I'm going to pull out now. I thought I had an open one, but I guess not. Alrighty, and these are just uh, nothing special, they're just sweet peas. And we're just going to get, you know, about, about that much, which is a lot of peas, but the little bit of sweetness with the kielbasa is going to go really nicely together, I think. These will go back into the refrigerator before they melt. All right, so we've got these. Now, of course, we've got to start thinking about our cheese. And for this, I'm not using anything particularly fancy. We're just going to use some sharp cheddar. I happen to have a couple pounds of it on hand because I just do. Uh, let's see here. Let me double check his recipe because, as I have said before, uh, Sirius Eats um, macaroni and cheese is all kinds of amazing and it's really, really fast. Uh, recipes, dish type. Probably should have pulled this up in advance, but like I said, I didn't realize I'd gone live before I. Uh, when I hit the button. All right, mac and cheese. 
Uh, if anyone feels like following along, this is the three ingredient stove top macaroni and cheese recipe, which we are completely ruining because uh, we are doing it with more than three ingredients. And that's just the way that uh, we're rolling tonight. So for this, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get some pasta elbows, which I'm pretty certain I have here. And for these, I'm going to be using um, some protein pasta because it's pretty good. Um, this is why we're making it almost from scratch. We didn't make the pasta. I mean, other than putting it in the pot now. Let me see here. My camera was running a little bit low on juice earlier. Let's see how it's doing now. Yeah, it's at 29%, which isn't fantastic, but should keep us for a couple of minutes. And fortunately, we only need a couple of minutes to get this over here. And I th think I can probably drop this down. Yeah, that's probably fine. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this in my Dutch oven because Dutch ovens are fantastic when it comes to uh, heat retention and keeping things hot. And I've got this really nice enameled Dutch oven from Lodge, which I've had now for at least a little while. And we are going to put in, how much does Kenji recommend? About six ounces is what he recommends, which I think is about what I have in this box, plus a little. So we're going to end up just dumping in the whole box. And that's uh, probably about four ounces. So we're going to add in a little bit of extra because when I get all the ratios right, we're going to get to probably about, probably about there. And uh, we're just going to add enough cold water to cover it. We're not looking to completely you know, drown it. So let me grab my cold water as you all stare at a bowl or a uh, Dutch oven full of uncooked macaroni. We're going to grab some cold water here. Just gently pour that in. And we're just looking to cover it. Not looking to go too much beyond that, but almost there. So probably about there. That covers it all. And that means that by the time it's uh, all boiled off, this pasta is going to be just about al dente, which is exactly what we're looking for. And we're going to go ahead and uh, bring this up to a boil. So I'm going to put it on high heat, and that'll start heating up. And we're going to add some salt, because salt is a wondrous thing. We're going to add just a little bit more salt, and heck, maybe even more, because salting your pasta water is a really good way to make sure you get flavorful pasta at the end. All right, so we've got our salt. This is going to heat up, and that's going to start boiling, and is not going to be terribly interesting for the next couple of minutes while it gets to that point. So we're going to put the camera back over here, and we're going to return to our cutting board and start prepping our cheese. Because cheese is a wonderful thing to make sure that we have prepped. And he's recommending about six ounces of uh, cheese, which is a pretty decent amount of cheese. Um, but... That's okay. More cheese is always better. We're going to move these out of the way. I'm going to grab my box grater from its home. We've got a scale here, so we're going to be able to tell when we've got six ounces. And I'm going to grab a bowl to put all of that cheese in. And I know from past experience that I'm going to want to have my medium glass bowl. So, have our bowl here, which we're going to tear on the scale, set that to ounces, 
We're going to cut open our cheese. And we're just going to commence to uh, shredding this. We're going to need six ounces of shredded cheese by the time that all of the uh, water finishes boiling and the pasta is done. I really like this new chef's knife. It's extremely sharp. Um, it looks cool. It's all kinds of awesome. We're just going to shred up about six ounces. This will probably take a moment or two. to about, it's about three ounces there. We're only making a single batch. I often make double batches when I do macaroni and cheese, but I'm not doing that today because that's a lot of cheese and that's a lot of elbow macaroni. And I don't really feel like storing all of that. And I'm definitely not going to eat it all today, so. I've got other things to eat tomorrow. That's about four and a half, so we're getting pretty close here. Four and three quarters. with getting cheese and such huge things is that it's very awkward to hold. All right, surely this must be about enough. Five point nine. Let's see if this brings it up to six. Yeah, five point nine five is probably close enough, especially since I've actually got a little bit in the grater. Yep, and there we go. That's six ounces. All right, so that is our six ounces of cheddar cheese. Looks like the water for the macaroni is just getting close to boiling, which is good. Um, so the thing that we're going to need, oh, I need to be stirring this macaroni a little bit. I could explain why. Keep it from uh, clumping on the bottom there. Um, so what we're going to need here is some evaporated milk. Um, I happen to have quite a lot of evaporated milk. And let me find one of the smaller ones because I have both large ones and small ones. We've still got about five ounces of evaporated milk here. You're supposed to have six, but honestly, it's not a big deal. It just helps everything uh, be a little bit creamier and uh, gives it that proper mouthfeel for um, mac and cheese. And we'll put the rest of this away for another day. Looks like we used about half a pound, which is about right. Give it six ounces of cheese. All right, that's put away. We've got our evaporated milk here, which we're gonna. Again, the name of the game is making sure everything's ready to go when the uh, when the pasta is ready, because as soon as that happens, we're going to start moving pretty fast with everything. We're going to dump everything in, um, bring everything kind of back to 
a bit of, well, we, so we put in the evaporated milk, and we bring it back up to a low simmer, and then we'll be uh, getting everything else added pretty fast thereafter. Um, because we don't want to burn the cheese or scald the evaporated milk. So we're going to make sure this is fully shaken up. All shook up. Going to get it all opened up and ready to go. Because I think that that pasta, as I look over it, it probably only has another minute or two left. Right, and let's check the battery on this. Sure, why not? That's probably fine. So we're going to reposition to where all the action's going to be taking place. And let's angle this a little bit. Don't want to put you directly above the... Uh, pot because that would have meant that you very quickly wouldn't have been able to see anything. There's a lot of steam coming off of it just as it there's supposed to be. So now we just kind of need to wait for it to finish boiling. That's getting pretty close. I can feel the pastas. So getting just about to the right spot. It's expanded a pretty good amount. Just a little bit more. Gonna get that water down just a bit further. So the order of operations that we're gonna be doing this in is the uh, condens or the evaporate evaporated milk. Boy. Um, it's going to get dumped in. Everything's going to be brought back up to a boil, which should only take a moment or two because there's a lot of heat in all of this. Um, and then we are going to dump in the cheese, reduce everything to low. Uh, we're going to put in the kielbasa and we're going to put in the uh, peas to try and get those up to temperature. The peas are going to take a moment or two because they are frozen, but uh, not too long because while they are frozen, they are going to quickly get warm. I think we are very nearly there. Turn on the fan here to try and pull some of the uh, steam back. It does not appear to be working. All right, I think that the pasta is about ready here, so we're going to go ahead and dump in the milk. Bring that up to a boil. It looks like it's already hit that. It's one of the great things about using uh, cast iron uh, for this. It has a ton of heat retention in it. So when you dump in something that's a little bit cooler, like the milk, it brings it back up to temperature really, really fast. Um, so we're going to reduce this heat down to low. We're going to get the cheese in here. And if you were making a double batch, you would have just put in twice the amount of macaroni, twice the amount of cheese. Um, it, it scales pretty well with anything. I'm just going to kind of stir this around, get the cheese in there, make sure it's starting to melt which it is, it's getting all nice and creamy. And the name of the game here is to just keep it stirring in. You're trying to get a nice creamy sauce around it. We're also going to put in the kielbasa here. Keep that stirring around. Probably could use a little bit more kielbasa, but I think it'll still work out pretty well. Now I've got the sausage in there. We're going to get these P 
peas in there. Just make sure everything keeps mixing around. We're trying to make sure that, that heat gets into everything so everything's nice and warm. We're trying to get that nice creamy sauce, which will taste delicious. That's looking pretty good to me. I'm tempted to add a little bit of uh, maybe, um, try to think, maybe a little bit of red pepper or uh, even a little bit of paprika could be pretty good here if you are so inclined and want something a little bit spicier. Uh, personally, I usually, uh, if I want my macaroni and cheese to be a little bit spicier, usually once it's done, I will flavor each, uh, each bowl individually with sriracha or some other hot sauce. Um, just going to keep this mixing around here. We are so close to that being done. At this point, I'm just kind of looking at the peas. Try to see how close they are. The peas are going to kind of determine when everything else is ready. The pasta looks like it's cooked just about perfectly. We're going to taste this for seasoning. And that's really good. We're going to add in some more salt because it doesn't have quite enough of the uh, salt at the front. Going to mix that around and taste for seasoning again. And the peas are almost there. They're, by the time I finish this, the peas will be there. This is looking really good. This is really good. It's really fast. Um, yep, that's perfect. It's got just the right amount of cheesiness. Um, it's got just the right amount of mouthfeel. Uh, it's got the, the peas kind of bursting deliciously in there. They're still a little cool, but in a way that's basically just perfect and counteracts the macaroni really well. So I think that this is done. I'm going to grab a bowl here, figure out where my ladle is in my oh-so-full drawer of kitchen implements. I think it's kind of a requirement to have one of those. I'm just going to get a nice big ladle full of this. Because I know my camera is dying, we're probably going to here so I've got a nice bit of uh, mac and cheese with some peas and some kielbasa and uh, I'm gonna go eat this so thanks for hanging out uh, hopefully you enjoyed it uh, learned something or didn't learn something but uh, thanks for hanging out and I will catch you next time